when one joins the police force, they have elegance to protect the citizen of their country and maintain law and order. But as fate will have it, the constraint of life makes them do the unthinkable. On the 14th of July 2021, Kenyans were treated to the news of a killer cop who had already killed two people and was on a run. Welcome to the Insight Edition, my name is Maxwell, and on today's episode of Criminal Diaries, we're going to talk about the case of Akila Kop, Caroline Chemutai Kangogo. Caroline Kangogo was born in 1987 in Kamogich, Elge Omarakwet. She was the daughter of Barnabas Kipko H. Koril and Leah Kangogo. She joined Nyawa Boarding Primary School, and in 2004, she did her Kenya Certificate of Primary Education, scoring 305 marks. Later on, she was admitted at St. Alphonsus Nutei Girls School and scored a C- in her Kenya Certificate of Secondary Education. On 14th of August 2008, Kangogo joined the Kenya Police College in Kiganjo where she attained a first class in shooting range qualifications. In 2014, she went back to Kiganjo for a corporal course. She worked as a corporal for six years before she was promoted on 20th January 2015. She worked in different police stations for 13 years since she was employed as a police, but her last transfer was to Nakuru Police Station. Caroline Kangogo was married to Richard Ngeno, who was a scroll commander in charge of Marine Unit at the Kenyan Coast Guard, and together had two kids, aged 8 and 11. Her marriage was troubled as she allegedly fought her husband in public over infidelity. They later separated but agreed to co-parent. It is said that she entertained men with money and would break up when the money is finished, and sometimes men will fight over her. Kangogo was described as a party animal, but her exploit will sometimes turn nasty. She courted controversy wherever she went due to her habit for panicking quarrels and getting into fights. Caroline Kangogo came into the headlines after she was suspected of killing one of her colleagues, known as John Ongwendo, on Monday, July 5, before she fled to Juja. Hongweno's lifeless body was discovered inside the parking yard in Kasarani police line in Nakuru when his colleague was taking a walk around the area. Upon looking inside, he found his body lying on the car seat with blood oozing from the nose. He had been shot at the right side of the head and bled to death after his car was smashed by a stone at the driver's window. The Nakuru crime scene investigators visited the scene and confirmed Hongweno's death. At the scene, The investigators found the mobile number of Corporal Kangogo suspected to have been having an affair with Ongweno. On checking Ongweno's and Kangogo's house, the police did not find the firearm, but they noted that some of Ongweno's clothes were in Kangogo's house. As they were investigating, the owner of Dedamax Kimbo Hotel in Juja made a report through a phone call to the police that a man had been found dead in the hotel room. In the man's pocket was a wallet, a receipt, and the Toyota Probox car key. It was established that his identity was Peter Njeru Ndigwa, a 32-year-old man. Caroline Kangogo is said to have lured Ndigwa into the hotel where the two were said to have booked a room. She paid the bills and after some time, she was captured by the CCTV leaving the establishment. The police records say that she was last seen on a motorcycle along Thika Road heading to Nairobi. An autopsy carried out on Peter's body showed that he was shot in the head and bled to death. Kangogo disappeared after the incident which she had shockingly carried out within 24 hours. It was believed that she was after the men who were once in a relationship with her. The police launched a manhunt for Kangogo, but she was nowhere to be traced. People were warned against her, especially men, as she was described as armed and dangerous. Kangogo being at large sent fear and panic among people. As it was reported that Fanny Shemtai, a middle-aged woman from Tanzania, was shot by a licensed gun owner for allegedly resembling Caroline Kangogo. Caroline was still missing, but the sources say that she had expressed fear for her life and wished not to be detained in any police station. The director of criminal and investigation George Kinoti had formed a team of elite detectives from several specialized units of DCI to track down Corporal Kangogo. The Law Society of Kenya enlisted the services of veteran John Haminwa to represent Corporal Kangogo in court and to bargain for her release on bond pending her arrest. The search for her whereabouts had been scaled down to allow the lawyer to surrender Kangogo, with her family also having pleaded with her to turn herself in at the nearest police station. 
On Friday, 16 July 2021, Caroline Kangogo was found dead inside her mother's bathroom in Nyawa, Elgeo Maragot in the morning. According to the Rift Valley Regional Commissioner George Natembea, who confirmed her death, he alleged that she shot herself in the head. A suicide note was found in Kangogo's phone, which was believed to have written before her death. In the note, she noted that she had traveled to Mombasa to kill her husband, but spared his life due to compassion to her two children. About the death of Peter Ndwiga, Kangogo wrote that she owed no one an apology since Peter conned her 1.5 million of which 300,000 she had borrowed from her father's retirement benefit and he refused to pay. She also asked her family to bury her in a white wedding gown as her husband's philandering ways made it impossible for them to have a church wedding. Her body was then moved to a 10 county referral hospital mortuary. There were suspicions that Caroline could have been murdered but her father disputed the suspicions, insisting that she took her own life. He disclosed more details on how Kangogo sneaked into their compound on a border border around 5 am but was never seen again until the time her lifeless body was found.